So, my failed YouTube channels, or at least my channels on hold, are Scissorizer, Wealthbringer, and Banana Belly. Now, with the exception of Banana Belly, I was trying to do things that are outside of my fun zone. And I work best in my fun zone. With Scissorizer, I was making compilations of other things that happened on the internet. And I narrated them, and I talked about what was happening in the videos. I called it, hey, what's going on today? Hey, what's going on today? And I guess that's pretty fun. They were basically reaction videos. But I'm not really as interested in reacting to what everyone else is doing as to just doing fun things myself. You can check them out on the link to the channel is in the description below. Let me know if you like those kind of videos and you'd want to see more stuff like that. It would be pretty hard to convince me as they're very time consuming to research and create. And ultimately, I like me more. Then I did a channel last year called Wealthbringer. And I found that what I was doing was going very deep into the world of crypto and specifically gaming crypto. And that's really cool to nerd out on and wonder what projects are going to succeed and what's going to happen to each game and each company and each token. And if it's going to go to the moon and make all the NFT kids rich Lambos, bro. What we could be looking at is the first AAA blockchain open world first person MMORPG shooter with AI enhancements. But then you figure out that most of these projects are probably going to fail and it's just exciting for that day or that week, but it's not evergreen. And again, with this type of channel, I was talking about other people's projects, other people's creativity, and trying to give viewers ideas on how to invest money into highly speculative projects. Wealthbringer videos are also linked in the description below if you want to watch them. And Banana Belly. Well, that was a blast. And it would have been great, and it would have gone viral, and it would have made us massively rich and famous YouTube celebrities. The first thing that we have to do is kill the pumpkin. Look it, it's a pumpkin spice latte. But, alas, we went our separate ways. You can check out Banana Belly videos in the description below, but unfortunately, I can't make any more of those. There are a few other channels I worked on, but they're not worth mentioning as they didn't get very far into development, and I'm just not interested in discussing them or whatever, so... Too bad, Melon Sad. Um, so I've made many songs. I've written a bunch of failed jokes. I failed as a comedian. <laughs> Who cares? Maybe maybe this will be funny, maybe it won't. <laughs> oh yeah, so I was, uh, was watching uh, Planet of the Apes and... Uh... <laughs> so I did comedy off and on for years and ultimately I like comedy but I don't like the process that surrounds it. I don't like going out and looking for it. Oh, I gotta find my comedy space. I gotta find a place to grow and find my voice where people support me and nurture me. I got tired of going out. And the thing with stand-up comedy is if you're a comedian and whether you're funny or whether you're not funny, what you ideally want is a room filled with warm people. Warm, meaning they're hoping to get entertained. They're hoping to get some laughs, laughs tonight. Not a room that's filled with angry fishermen spitting tobacco on the walls, or other comedians who are using their phones as pillows to sleep on, or hooligans who are trying to watch a football game and you're interrupting them. What you want is a room filled with warm people who are there to watch you. And that is the hardest thing to get as an unknown stand-up comedian. That's ultimately the reason that the art form is so difficult. It has much less to do with how hard it is to go on stage and tell jokes and much more to do with how to get a consistent room to be able to tell those jokes to a crop of fresh meat, fresh rump roasts every night. Because then if your jokes are bad, as mine are, but you're able to tell them every night to a new warm crowd, your jokes will get gooder and you will become a gooder comedian. So I'm too lazy for that shit anymore. So I'm going to talk to the camera and the YouTube people. There's many things to talk about. The main topic to avoid is politics. There's god awful things going on in the world today in so many ways. And to talk about it is so divisive, 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 divisive. You're wrong. No, you're wrong. I'm as apolitical as possible. The other thing with current events, gonna talk about what this leader did or what that bureaucrat did or what's going on in this company and how they cheated their employees out of lunch breaks. That's interesting today. That's interesting today. But five months, five years from now, not gonna be relevant. There's nothing evergreen about that. It's like, hey, remember that journalist from the 70s who talked about the Whitewater Gates? Nope. Let's play his newscast again. Nope. Hey, remember Led Zeppelin's best 100 songs from the 70s? Yeah! Two-day Zeppelin drinking binge! Bring it on home! So here's my other likes and dislikes. 
I like fantasy fiction and movies, shows with swords and dragons, movies that take place in the past, whether it's back in the 80s or all the way back to the 1080s. I like period art and decoration, particularly European decoration, although Asian stuff can be really cool too. I had an authentic ninja sword when I was a kid, handmade and sharp. I love absurd comedy, physical comedy. I like poetry, especially abstract weirdo poetry that doesn't make any sense but exists only for the aesthetic pleasure of its crazy sounds. Most of the stuff that I wrote myself. Um, I like European art and music, as in Bach and Beethoven and Renoir and Picasso. Call me a snob. Who cares, teddy bears. I like 80s pop and rock music. A lot of the pop music from the 2000s until now. Although it seems like it lost a lot of its luster around 2015. And I like 90s indie rock, indie rock the weird off-kilter stuff. But mainstream 90s rock sounds like crap in my ears. And the pop just sounds banal too. I like Tudor and Victorian architecture and design. Not a fan of modern buildings or brutalism or whatever they call it. It looks brutal to me. I get nerdy with finances, particularly stocks and options, and I want to understand real estate better, particularly for tax implications. Yeah, that's right. Don't pay your taxes because you wrote them all off. So the niche is Aaron Tedda. The niche is that I don't have a niche. Am I an asshole? Am I interesting enough to be and entertaining enough to be my own niche? Maybe my head is bigger than the Pacific Ocean. Maybe I am the ultimate asshat. <laughs> Do I have enough creativity? Do I have enough originality? Do I have enough personality? Do I have enough sophistication to offer just me? Am I interesting enough to destroy the niche? Can I become the niche destroyer? We shall see. This is an experiment. I hope I can be accessible. I usually totally overdo my words and ideas. I don't want my language to be so convoluted and intellectual that only persnickety academics can comprehend what in the demonic tarantella I am deliberating about. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to do things that only weirdo nerds can get. Not that I want to appeal to normies, but I don't want to be a dataist outcast. You know, Michio Kaku knows a lot about astrophysics, but when he talks, grade schoolers can understand it. Know what I mean, Sam? So I want to make art. I want to make music. I want to make stories. I want to make videos. I want them to be fun and crazy. I want them to be exciting and impassioned. I want them to be hilarious, yet reflective. I don't want them to be political. I don't want to be a teacher. I don't want to run a pyramid scheme hoping to promise some future personal gain to the consumer that is separate from the art itself. I want them to be enjoyed for enjoyment's sake. Would you like to buy a used gold watch? So I'm sure everyone's turned off this video by now, so I'm just gonna say thank you and I love you all, including me because I'm probably the only one watching. Have a splendid and blessed day. Namaste.